All right, guys, next lesson in this is about direct inverse combined and joint variation, it's 8-5. Uh, direct variation, you've actually done before. You learned this in Algebra 1, maybe even a little before that. Um, we're going to review that real quick, and then we're going to talk about the other three types. Um, combined and joint will be brand new. You probably have seen a little bit of inverse, but that's actually why this is in this unit, is because inverse is a rational function, which is what we've been learning how to graph recently. All right, so just pause the video um, if you need to take some time to write these down. Um, so direct variation is a relationship between two variables that can be written in the form y equals kx. So that equation is very important. We'll be using that a lot. y equals kx is for direct variation. k is a constant. It's called the constant of variation. So that will be an actual number when we do a real problem. All right, and then uh, the words you'll see in the problem are y varies directly as x. So the thing before the equal sign, it's not always x and y. They might use different letters. So the letter before the equal sign will be before the word varies, and the letter after the equal sign will be after all the rest. All right, so first thing we're going to do is uh, learn how to graph these. So y varies directly as x, and y equals 4 when x equals 5. So to be able to graph it, we need to know what k is. So what we do is we set up our equation, y equals kx. We plug in the x and y they gave us. So uh, y is 4, and x is 5. And then we solve this equation for k. So we just divide by 5, so k equals 4 fifths. So our equation that we're going to graph is y equals 4 fifths x. All right, this is a linear equation. All right, x to the first power, it's in the form of y equals mx plus b. Uh, there is no b, there will never be a b. All right, so a linear equation where the y-intercept is zero, like this one, is always a direct variation problem. So to graph this, you just need to plot the y-intercept, which is zero. Zero, zero will always be a point on a direct variation problem, every single time. Right, because there's never a y-intercept. Mm -hmm. And then your k is your slope. So you just you do rise over run, up 4, over 5, right there. All right, remember you could also go down 4 and left 5. Mm -hmm. And there you go. Draw your line. And that's the graph. All right, we also need to be able to do uh, word problems that involve these. So that's our next one. All right, so a map of Texas is scaled so that two inches represents 30 miles. How far apart are El Paso and Odessa so that they are 20 inches apart on the map? All right, so there's two methods. I want you to know how to do both. So um, the best method that works on every problem, no matter what type of variation we're doing, um, is using the equation. So the equation for direct variation. All right, now this problem doesn't say specifically direct variation, so you have to kind of infer that. Um, on a scale, um, if like this much represents this much, like if the variables are going to both increase or both decrease in relation to each other, that's a direct variation. So as the inches go up, the miles goes up. If the inches goes down, the miles goes down. That's a direct variation. So we want to use the equation y equals kx. So first job is to figure out what k is. So for that, we need the one, the two inches is 30 miles. So we can just label this inches as x and miles as y. We could also switch those and call inches y and miles x. It doesn't really matter. You can do it either way. All right, so if we plug it in this way, we get 30 equals k times 2. Divide by 2, so k equals 15. So that gives me my equation, y equals 15x. And then you need to plug in the other, other piece that they gave you. So they gave us another piece here, 20 inches. Inches is x, remember. So we plug this in, y equals 15 times 20. And just multiply that out, and that's our answer. So 15 times 20 is 300 miles. Mm -hmm. All right, the other way is to use the formula. So here's the formula for direct variation. It's a proportion. Uh, so you've seen this before, x1 over y1 is equal to x2 over y2. And they will have had to have given you three of these pieces of information, and it's your job to find the fourth piece. 
So if we go up here to use the formula, then 2 would be our x1, and 30 would be our y1, and 20 would be our x2, and we're trying to find y2. So let's plug all this in, 2 over 30 equals 20 over y2. And to solve a proportion, you need to cross multiply. That's how you solve when you have two fractions equal to each other, you cross multiply, and then you'll solve for the variable. So 20 times 30 is 600. 2 times y2 is 2y2. And we just divide by 2 on both sides, and we end up with our answer of 300. So if you're a person who likes memorizing formulas, then method two is the way for you. You'll just have to know that's the formula for direct variation. If you're like me and you don't like uh, memorizing formulas, then method one's a better use. You'll have to know what the equation is, obviously, but that's more of an algebraic way to solve it out. All right, next one's joint variation. So this is a new one. Um, it's very similar to direct variation, except there are three variables instead of just two. So a lot of this stuff is the same. Um, but you'll see the new equation here, y equals kx, z. So there's the third variable there. Uh, but they're all multiplied together. All right, k is still the constant of variation. And you'll see instead of varies directly, it'll say varies jointly as. And then the two variables on the right side of the equation are after the word jointly. And the one on the left side of the equation is before the word jointly. All right, that's going to um, come into play here because we are going to be switching the letters from X, Y, and Z into different ones. So just remember that order um, and how to write the equation. All right, uh, no graphing on this. This would be a three-dimensional graph, and we don't do that in Algebra 2. So you don't have to worry about graphing a joint variation. You just need to be able to solve a problem. Um, there is no formula for this one. You have to use the equation. So this is going to be like method one from the last problem. All right, so volume of a cone varies jointly as the area of the base and the height. All right, so V is the first one before the word varies. Then we have our K, and then as the base and the height, so B, H. All right, so first job is to find K. So to find K, we need to be given a V, a B, and an H that are all connected together. And so that's the next part, and V is equal to 12 pi when b is equal to 9 pi and h is equal to 4. So we want to plug all of those into this and solve for k. So 12 pi equals k times 9 pi times 4. All right, so we can multiply together our 9 pi and our 4 to get 36 pi. And then we can divide by 36 pi and the pi's will cancel and 12 over 36 reduces to one third. All right, so our formula is V equals one third base times height. And all of you geometry people, if you remember the formula for volume of a cone, then you might've already known or guessed that K was gonna be one third because that's the formula for volume of a cone. All right, so now they want us to find B, that should be a capital B, when V is 24 pi and H is nine. So now they're gonna leave out one of the three variables, give us the other two, but since we know what K is now, we should be able to solve it. So plug these in, 24 pi is equal to one third. We don't know what B is, and then times nine. All right, so one third times nine is three. And then we divide by three, and 24 divided by three is eight pi. Uh, let's put our units on there. This is an area of a base, and uh, this is actually wrong here. That should have been feet squared. Um, so our area of our base is feet squared is equal to B. All right, next one is inverse variation. Uh, this is the reason why this is in this unit, uh, because the graph of what this looks like. So same type of deal here. Um, notice the new equation for inverse. It is y equals k over x. So that's a rational function, just like we learned how to graph uh, before. Um, so let's graph one of these. All right, y varies inversely as x and y equals two when k equals three. All right, so we need to figure out what k is first. So we plug in two and three for x and y. So two equals k over three. Multiply by 3 on both sides, and we get k equals 6. 
So our equation we're going to graph is y equals 6 over x. All right, it's never going to be more complex than that. You're never going to have like an x plus 5 on the bottom or anything out to the side. The only thing that will change is that number on top. So rather than go through Rady um, or transformations, what I like to do to graph these is just simply plug in some numbers for x that divide into 6. All right, 0 cannot be plugged in. So remember your asymptotes. Vertical asymptote at x equals 0, which is the y-axis, and a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. This is a bottom-heavy graph because the exponent on the bottom, 1, is bigger than the exponent on the top, 0. Um, so we have our asymptotes there, and then I'm just going to start plugging in numbers. Like 1 is a good number to plug in. If you plug in 1 for x, you get 6. So 1, 6. All right, 2 is a good number to plug in because 6 divided by 2 is 3, so 2, 3. 3 is a good number to plug in. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And 6 is a good number to plug in because 6 over 6 is 1. And then just draw in your graph from there. All right, don't forget about the negative side. Um, all those same numbers but the negative version. So negative 1, negative 6. Negative 2, negative 3. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 6, negative 1. All right, and that's why we cover this lesson in this unit because of what this graph looks like. And so y'all would be able to graph it like we've learned how. All right, just like with the others, you need to be able to solve a problem with this one. Okay, these will usually include the words varies inversely, but even if it doesn't, you should be able to figure out from the context of the problem. All right, um, in an inverse variation, if one variable goes up, the other variable goes down, all right? That's an inverse relationship. So direct relationship is they go the same direction. Inverse relationship is they go opposite directions. All right, so in this one, we are talking about the time needed to complete a race. They do say varies inversely, so that takes all the guessing. It's not guessing, but you don't have to figure it out for yourself. They told you in the problem. Um, but even if they didn't say that, um, if you run faster, increase your speed, what's going to happen to the time it takes you to finish. It's going to go down. All right, so that's an inverse relationship. All right, so once again, two methods here. Um, we can use the equation, so y equals k over x. To do that, we need to first find out what k is. So um, 8.82 miles per hour completes the race in 2.97 hours. So I'm going to call my miles per hour my x and my hours y. Again, you can switch those two and come up with the same answer. It doesn't matter. All right, so 2.97 is equal to K over 8.82. So we just need to multiply by 8.82. All right, so we pull up our calculator for this one, 2.97 times 8.82, and we get 26.195. All right, so now we write out that equation, y equals 26.195 over x. All right, and so now we are going to plug in our 3.5, that's hours. We labeled hours as our y value. So 3.5 is equal to 26.195 over x. So to solve this one, you need to multiply by x on both sides, 3.5x equals 26.195, and then divide by 3.5. X equals, and we'll plug this into our calculator as well, divided by 3.5, 7.48, and that'll be in miles per hour. Okay, um, check to make sure your answer makes sense here. Um, it took longer to finish, so if time went up, then that means speed should go down. So our number should be less than the original one they gave us. 8.82, 7.48 is less than that. All right, really quickly, using the formula, it's x1, y1 equals x2, y2. All right, and so we just need to x1, y1, those first two, and then we've got our y2, and we're solving for our x2. So 8.82 times 2.97 is equal to x2 times 
divide by 3.5, type that into your calculator, and you end up with the same answer as over here.